Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, I'm attempting to reach my goal of a thousand subscribers and if you could click the button, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, we're here today to take a look at a brand new Vandenberg album called 2020. It just came out Friday, May 29th of 2020 and it's the first new album by the, this band in 35 long years, so really glad to be getting this here. It's a deluxe edition, so we will take, do an unboxing of that. Um, going back, the band formed in the Netherlands by namesake Adrian Vandenberg in 1981, with the original lineup being Bert Herrick on vocals, Joss Zoomer on drums, Dick Kemper on bass, and of course Adrian on guitar. And they were signed to Atlantic Records and released their debut in 1982, which is this album here. This album also had the top 40 single, Burning Heart, which reached number 39 on the Billboard Hot 100. And then in 1983, they released this album, Heading for a Storm, and incidentally, Adrian Vandenberg, who's also a painter, he did the artwork for this, so pretty cool. And um, that album had the single Different Worlds, which did really well, but it didn't climb the charts nearly as high as Burning Heart did. And then 1985 saw them release Alibi, and Adrian also did the art for this, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, this album didn't chart, and eventually, uh, Bert Herrick, the vocalist, left the group. So in 1987, Adrian got a request from David Coverdale of White Snake to do some guest solos on the 1987 White Snake album. This one here, also just known as being self-titled, um, he ends up only playing one on it for the song Here I Go Again, but following David Coverdale firing all the guys on in White Snake who had recorded the 1987 album, he asks uh, Adrian Vandenberg to join and he does. So Adrian Vandenberg actually goes out and does the tour for the 1987 album, which of course this is their biggest album and he's in all the videos and stuff like that. Now for the next album, which is Slip of the Tongue, this one here, uh, Adrian co-wrote all the stuff on here along with David Coverdale, but due to an injury, he couldn't record it. So they brought in Steve Vai to do the recording for the album. So Steve is actually interpreting all of Vandenberg's parts uh, for that. Now, Adrian did heal in time to go out and do the tour, and he did the tour. But David Coverdale decided to disband White Snake in 1990 in order to do his Coverdale Page project. So at that point, um, Adrian forms a new sort of super group, Manic Eden. And the lineup for this is pretty cool. It's got uh, Ron Young on vocals from uh, late 80s, early 90s hair band Little Caesar. And then Rudy Sarzo on bass from Quiet Riot. Tommy Aldridge, uh, formerly of White Snake, you know, his bandmate. And then, of course, Adrian on guitar. Now, in 1994, David Coverdale does decide to put White Snake back together, and Adrian joins at that time, again playing live with them for a while. I think at this point they were really only touring, maybe Europe, I know definitely Japan, they still had a really big following there. And in 1997, they recorded the Restless Heart album, which only came out in Japan. Uh, later it was released, uh, many years later, and I know it was also released as a David Coverdale solo album, so really confusing history with that album, but in 1997 it was a White Snake album. Uh, Restless Heart, which is really good. It's a little more mellow, but it is a really great album. They also did this one, Starkers in Tokyo, a live acoustic unplugged uh, type show um, that came out in 97 at the same time. And so for the rest of the 1990s and all of the 2000s, Adrian uh, lays really low. I think he does a, you know, a couple one-off recordings here and there, but he doesn't do anything with the band. And uh, not until 2013 when he re or he actually forms a new group called The Moon Kings. And they put out three albums. This one here is their debut. And then they did a second album, MK2, or Moon Kings 2. And they also did this one, Rugged and Unplugged, an uh, EP on here. Uh, really great stuff. The singer you know, has a very close sound to David Coverdale. Obviously, it's the style of vocalist that uh, Adrian likes. Um, which brings us to his new album, Vandenberg 2020. Now this does have an all new lineup on it. And I think the reason that he has an all new lineup on it is back in 2012, the three original guys from Vandenberg attempted to take over the name and tour without Adrian. And kind of odd in the sense that Adrian is the namesake to the group, but they were gonna tour uh, separating the name into Van Den Berg, 
which incidentally is actually how Adrian spells the name. Uh, it was westernized and pushed together when he formed the band, but his real spelling is separated like that. So these guys were gonna try to do that, that didn't happen, and now finally we have a brand new Vandenberg from namesake Adrian Vandenberg. All new lineup. Uh, it's got Ronnie Romero on lead vocals, uh, Randy Vander Elson on bass, Cohen Herfst on drums, and of course Adrian on guitar. And um, Ronnie Romero is just seemingly everywhere right now. Uh, he's the current vocalist for the reformed Rainbow. Uh, he's in a group called The Ferryman, which is just a stunning group. Um, that one's got Magnus Carlsen in it. And then uh, Corleone, which has Lee Leone from Goddard in it. And uh, Destinia in this. And this has uh, Marco Mendoza on it and uh, Tommy Aldridge on it. Um, so, you know, again, this guy's everywhere. is a powerhouse. The, the album Vandenberg is, in my opinion, um, very much in the vein of White Snake, and it does very much sound like the very first Vandenberg album. The two later ones had uh, more of that 80s sound to it. Um, so this album really does pick up where that one left off. And um, Ronnie Romero does sing in a very David Coverdale uh, style to the way that he does it, which is uh, nothing against Ronnie Romero because he's just a powerhouse singer but I kind of wanted you to understand the power in which Ronnie Romero has if you don't know him there's ten tracks on this album nine superb new songs on it one of them is a re-recording of that 1983 hit Burning Heart it's cool to get the new take on it with Ronnie singing it and considering that all of the uh, Vandenberg albums only had nine full songs on it. Alibi actually had one, um, you know, little instrumental, uh, you know, intro track on it. Uh, I understand why this one also probably, you know, the reason why it only has the nine tracks on it, even though today that's considered a little short, but at least we get the bonus track of uh, Burning Heart making it 10 songs on here. And in my opinion, there aren't any bad songs on this. I really like them all. It's just a stunning album. Album opener, Shadows of the Night, is really powerful and a chugging rocker, much in the vein of, of a lot of the White Snake material. Track two, Freight Train, is also really good in my opinion. Number four, Let It Rain, is the song that's most similar to their two hits, Burning Hard and Different Worlds. And incidentally, those tracks are track four on those albums. And then he's got this one, Let It Rain, track four. So kind of interesting what he's doing with the the song uh, list, the, the song placements, and the total number of songs across his albums. Um, track six, Shout, is my favorite track on here. Um, it's just got a really cool groove and of course a great message to go along with it. So let's take a look at this. Let's open it up. This is the front cover. There's the spine of it. It does have, have something on the top and the bottom sides. Nothing on that side, but you can see where the uh, the opener on it. And so if we do, we just lift this right, right up on here. And then you can see the goodies that come inside this. And so I'm going to pull these out and I'll show you. First thing we've got here is a set of guitar picks, which are really cool. I always love it when they include these, especially when the guitarist is the, the big uh, you know person within the group. Then there's uh, these two coasters. Same thing on the other one. There's a sticker included and a postcard. And then of course we've got the album. And I like that the album is a full Diggy Pack album. They didn't uh, do it just like in a sleeve or something. So I can't take it out separate from the box and just have the CD. There's the inside of it. Nothing behind that disc, it's just black so I'm not gonna pull it out there. I'll show you the booklet though. It's uh, got the lyrics of course in it. And then in the center of it, we've got some pictures of the group, more lyrics through the last couple pages and some thank yous and whatnot. And then another great shot of the guys there on this. So bottom line, you know, fans of Vandenberg, you know, I think are gonna really like this. Fans of White Snake are gonna like this. Ronnie Romero is this real up and coming vocalist who's making a name for himself. And I think this album totally solidifies his presence. Uh, it's only gonna assist in making his name bigger. Uh, hopefully this is the start to a lot more from Vandenberg, you know, because he had taken so much time off there. And in my opinion, this is his best album. I think it's uh, it's better than the original Vandenberg, in my opinion, better than the Moon Kings, better than um, the Restless Heart, the album he actually plays on for White Snake. And, um, you know, 
Adrian may not have recorded a lot through his career, but what he has recorded has been absolute top notch. So uh, do check this album out if you're not familiar with them or if you're on the fence about it, I highly recommend it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and I hope everyone has a great day. Take care, bye-bye.